Okay, I'm making this video to show you my new 3D printer. It's actually one of many different kinds of 3D printers called the RepRap printers. Um, this is the Prussia Mendel and it's, it's kind of a minimalist design, I guess, because it uses much less like parts and hardware, like screws and rods. Um, and it also has as many of its own parts that can be printed by the printer itself. So it's sort of like a self-duplicating machine. So after you have your first one, it's actually cheaper to make a second one than it is for your first one. So these parts I had to buy, but now I could actually print my own parts for this. You see what it does is it has this extruder here, and there, these wires are a thermistor, which is a temperature sensor, and a heater. So it heats the plastic that goes into it right right there at the metal end, right, right in uh, that part right there. That melts the plastic, and then this motor, the stepper motor here, turns this gear, and that gear is attached to a hobbed bolt. The hobs on the bolt grip the filament and pull it in to the extruder. Um, so this thing has all three dimensions of movement, so this, this is the x-axis and it moves along these smooth bars right here and it's, uh, it's moved by this stepper motor back here that has a gear and a belt. The belt is attached to the extruder in the back so it can move left and right. And then uh, the entire x-carriage is attached to this z-axis, which is up and down, and there's two motors, one over there and one over there. It has a smooth bar on the outsides, and it has threaded bar on the insides. This is a little coupler to attach the threaded bar to the motor, and they work in unison to lift the x-carriage. And so that's how it gets the height. And so um, the print bed itself moves on the y-axis, which is the in and the out, and uh, it prints on a piece of glass covered in heat-resistant tape, and uh, the red square right that's underneath the glass right there, it's actually heated, and uh, it's attached to this power supply and this switch, and um, powered by this uh, big cord, and that allows this to get hot, um, and so the plastic will stick to it pretty well. This is PLA plastic that's uh, 1.75 millimeter diameter and it comes out of a 0.5 millimeter nozzle. So you can see how it works. The first few layers of each part that's printed is solid. So it actually has a solid base and then from there on it makes sort of a chain link fence structure. And let's see if you can, I don't know if you can see it much but it's right there, you can, it, it, it's just, it's uh, the printer's effort to hollow the part out, and uh, you can change the density, so how much it hollows the part out. This camera's pretty blurry, sorry. And uh, then right here, here's how it's connected to the computer. There's this USB cable right there, and uh, this runs to my computer over here, and you see it has the stepper motor drivers right here, 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 and here. This goes to the thermistor and the heater for the nozzle. And um, this is where the power comes in. And it comes in from this power supply. So I'm actually using two different power supplies. One for the heated bed and one for the, uh, for the rest of the printer. Um, you see it has little in stops right here. They're basically a little sensor, and they can sense when a little tab goes in between those two plastic pieces right there and there, and it can sense that it's reached the end, and so uh, it can tell where it's at. It can tell when it's gone too far so it doesn't run into either this end or this end. And um, you can see the Z, like all the smooth bars have these linear bearings so that they can slide really freely. So this one has the linear bearings right there on the bottom, right there and there. And this one has the 
bearings right in these right there and you can see the belt is attached with these little clamps right there and uh, this heated plate is actually elevated from this acrylic plate right underneath it and it's actually spring loaded so that if the the nozzle the little print nozzle right there runs into the print bed it won't actually damage anything it'll just push it down so it's a pretty minimalistic design and I built it myself with parts that I got from eBay and with a lot of video and uh, written instructions how to put it together it's uh, pretty cool some things that I made with it here's a piece of a puzzle that might be possible it's simple enough that it might be able to be made with this so I may finish this sometime soon hopefully um, here's a little mask it's, it came out pretty poor quality so this is sort of a test here's a a mustache ring that you can wear and you can see the ring itself isn't quite circular it's sort of distorted and that's because uh, when I printed it this belt was loose and I tightened it after that so I printed a new one and it's much more circular except I had a weird problem with there being a gap between the two there's like two rings that are separate you can kind of see how they're separate and I don't know how to fix that but here's another ring I printed and it has a clip so you can attach things to it and that's what this mask was supposed to actually attach to on the bottom but it kind of failed um, let's see where I have this right here this is a Mockingjay pin uh, earring or pendant or something um, you see it has a little hole at the top and it's from the Hunger Games so it has this little arrow that goes through um, the birds holding the arrow so I designed that and printed it and it's pretty it shows off the accuracy of this thing um, and then the layers this might show you how how the layers turn out that's actually a bunch of really tiny layers um, I'll take some pictures and put them in at the end of the video so you can actually see the detail because this camera isn't really the best but um, see it's pretty slow it still takes a while this whole time during this video it's actually only printed uh, I don't know so well, it's printed several layers but I turn the accuracy up so that um, it makes pretty accurate parts so I hope you enjoyed seeing my printer this is what I've been working on for quite some time okay so I thought I'd also go over um, the process of getting a printable file so uh, you can start off by either designing your own file in some 3D design software or downloading a 3D file from Thingiverse. Um, this is what I was printing in the first part of the video. You see I've left it for about 30 minutes or so, I don't know, about 30 minutes and it's gotten that far. Um, there's a few mistakes on the part that I'll have to clean up. Uh, you, you'll notice that it can actually print at a slight angle. There's actually parts of this, like that right there, that get wider as they go up, and uh, it can print. It can print like that to some extent, and it can also bridge small gaps. But um, I've had a little bit of trouble doing that. So yeah, you, after you download a file, you can uh, use a software called Slicer, and it basically slices the model into a bunch of little layers and turns those each individual layer into a set of instructions like this and uh, here's kind of how it would look yeah let me zoom in a bit okay like there you see it it's the instructions of where the nozzle will move so you see it leaves about three perimeter layers on every edge and then for the uh, for filling it in, you'll notice that for this layer it prints like this, and the next layer it prints like this, perpendicular to that previous layer, and that's how it fills it in. That's how it gets that sort of chain link fence structure. 
Uh, I think I think all these little blue lines, like right there, are where the the print head stops extruding and lifts up, and it'll so it'll print it'll print this line, lift up, go over here, and start and print this line, then lift up again and go over here, etc. And uh, it'll turn that into a set of instructions for your printer to use. This is uh, you you load those instructions with that load file button and it'll pop up here. Here's the progress bar and uh, it tells you the temperature down here. Here's where you can control the temperature. You can manually extrude or manually move all of the motors. So if I want to move the nozzle up 10 millimeters, I would click this up 10 button. Or if I wanted to move the y-axis 0.1 millimeter, I could click that and it also controls just the speed of the movement and some of that is controlled with the slice with the instruction making software. Um, this this control software here is called Pronterface and it's actually what communicates with the printer and allows it to print. Okay, so I think that's all I wanted to show you. Um, thanks for watching.